guys and welcome back to the channel for part two of this three-part upgrade series on my biggest upgrade ever to my car and as you can see we are now at V Engineering one of my favorite places the guys are absolutely rammed at the moment there are cars absolutely everywhere so let's go inside and let's see what's happening with my car. There are literally so many cars in here, it's crazy. And, oh my God, my car is on the ramp. So, the engine is now out. I've been told it went incredibly smoothly. So this is my M838T. Waiting to go away today to race engine build inside the engine compartment everything is for a car that's done 35k it's quite remarkably clean i think so really quite happy with that no issues so far as you can see the flywheel looks nice and shiny i've been told that this was a late stage upgrade on my car so it's good that it's got this flywheel fitted it's more durable nice to know that no issues at all really which I'm really pleased with for a 35k car there is some oil seepage down to this turbo valve apparently that's quite normal but the rest of the engine is solid if we go over and have a look at the transmission here so my gearbox again apparently is in good condition the only issue is we've got some oil leak here from the breather which apparently is quite normal um, and I'm going to take advantage I think of the catch can upgrade while the car is here uh, because it eliminate that issue other than that I've been told everything's spot on which is incredible to hear a car of my age here we can see under trays with my rather gargantuan impact from that large rock that I talked about in my earlier video now unfortunately it's caused a little bit more damage than we originally thought um, initially I thought it was just a couple of under trays that needed to be replaced plus the gearbox subframe which I managed to source secondhand on eBay but apparently the main engine subframe this one here that's been quite badly bent as well so again eBay is my friend I've managed to source a new one for the grand sum of 120 pounds and we'll be fitting that as part of the work so the next part is that the engine will be going to Dave at race engine build and assuming when he cracks the engine open there's no major nasties in there which we're not expecting at this point due to the fact that everything else seems to be spot on um, we'll be going for the full turbo charge upgrade with hybrid turbos as well as all the forged en engine components um, so we'll be looking at north of 800 horsepower, which is bloody crazy um, and also super exciting at the same time. Really pleased with the condition of the car overall, considering the mileage it's done. It's still looking in good condition. Um, I do try and look after it. The only thing I really want to get done is the front under tray. It's another casualty of my large rock impact. But you can see the temporary repairs that I put in place here and here. They seem to be holding out quite well. You can also see my undercar aero fins. Um, and they are luckily still in place despite the fact that I've been over a few road bumps since. So altogether, really, really happy with the way things are going. And in the next part of this section, uh, we will hopefully be at Dave's shop at Race Engine Build to have a look at the engine while it's in pieces. And here we are for the next chapter of part two of my ultimate upgrade series for my McLaren. So we are now at Race Engine Build in Leicester. And it seems quite crazy because the engine only got here a day or so ago. Uh, but my engine is here and this is it in its component form. Amazing that Dave has got this car car's engine apart so quickly um, 
But yeah, there it is. And we can see on the table here that Dave has very kindly laid out for me for a load of components. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about those components, the components that are coming out and the ones that are going in and why we have selected the components that we're selecting. So if we start on the right hand side here, these are my old pistons and rods. And as you can see, it's a cast material and it's really quite thin. So not great. The pistons, however, which is the P13 spec, are actually quite solid, according to Dave. Uh, the great thing that I have learned is that my engine, despite having done 35,000 miles, has very little wear. Um, he says that is testament to the regularity of the oil changes. Now I've said on my channel quite a few times that I change my oil um, every 5k minimum um, and he said that really seems to have paid off. The main component that tends to wear are these rockers and though they do, although they do have some wear, he said the engine was fine technically and that these would keep operating. Some of them have got a little bit of play in them. They basically um, start to play on the shaft here where it inserts into the main casting um, and he said there's a couple that have essentially got a bit of play in them but generally um, he said they're almost in um, perfect nick or perfect nick for a car that's done 35k let's say. Uh, these are my old cylinder liners now for those that you don't know the cylinder liner can be a point of uh, failure on these engines. Um, the reason for that is is that there is some engraving if you can see that there and that creates a weakness in the cylinder uh, just that little engraving um, which can develop a crack in the cylinder. Now again my cylinders he said are all pretty much spot on uh, despite the mileage and the fact that I'm running 650 plus horsepower um, but he did give me these to give you, let you see um, some that have actually failed. Um, so these have basically both got cracks in them. Um, this one's been marked up with a black line around it. You can see where it's cracked. Um, and although this one hadn't failed at this point, um, it was uh, going to fail uh, and then would cause uh, a substantial leak in the cylinder. Um, so new components so we've got these lovely italian rp rods as you can see much higher quality a cast item if i hold them next to the originals you can see how much chunkier they are um, so they've basically increased the width profile and then they cut out down the side but just a much nicer quality item with regards to the rockers, we're getting a complete set of rockers, okay? So, <clears throat> the whole set will be replaced. We're going to go with the OEM ones, because um, Dave basically says that the 650 generation rockers are actually the best quality um, from the various generations. But what we are going to do is we're going to have these DLC coated. So DLC or diamond light coating is a super slippery um, top surface. I can actually show you here. This is a DLC coated one. Uh, and it create and it basically stops the friction um, that causes problems and causes the rockers to fail. So it only costs 10 pounds each to do these. So while we're inside the engine, we're just gonna get that done. Um, so it will bulletproof the engine because obviously it's going to be running north of 800 horsepower when it's finished. With regards to the pistons, we're going with P13 generation pistons, which is an OEM piston. Um, so Dave, rather luckily, uh, because of his links with McLaren, um, has access to their entire warehouse of spare parts, essentially. 
And what he does is when he specs and builds an engine is he picks the best components from each generation of engine, which is exactly what he's done here. Now, obviously the rods, they're aftermarket, uh, but everything else is going to be OEM that he has then picked the cream of the crop from the various generations of the engines. So this is a P13 generation piston. Uh, as you can see, it's really nice quality. The casting is absolutely spot on. So we'll be having these pistons. And these are my new liners. So the new liners are P1 spec liners from the P1 GTR. Um, <coughs> they have laser etching rather than engraving um, on the side. So they don't have any weaknesses like my current ones did um, and are therefore bulletproof. So Dave will be uh, building the engine. We're also having the turbo sent away to TTE. Uh, they will be hybridized um, to handle more power. Um, I've decided now that I will be going with the catch cam upgrade uh, to deal with the uh, seepage that we're getting from the transmission. Um, so that will be going on as well. Um, <clears throat> the engine build is probably going to take another probably two to three weeks because it will take a little while for the turbos to be done by TTE and then come back again. Uh, the engineering will be reassembling all the Gucci parts, including the heavily upgraded engine. Um, the car should be good, uh, according to Dave, for up to around 1,000 horsepower, but we won't be aiming quite that high because we want to keep it reasonably sensible. Um, like I said, north of 800, probably around 850 maybe, and then we'll get the car mapped. Um, with regards to the mapping, we haven't decided 100% on who we're going to use at this point. But Dave, again, has contacts uh, within ex-McLaren employees um, who used to do that for a living. And there's a good possibility that we'll be using one of those guys to do the work. Um, so, getting exciting now. Um, I'm really, really pleased, just as a footnote, that my engine is so healthy. Um, there are no real major issues with it. Um, at all despite 35k miles and I think again that's testament to the fact that if you do take good care of the car the key part of that being the uh, regular maintenance and regular oil changes um, they are solidly made mechanically also taking into account that my car is running well over stock power at 650 to 670 horsepower means that yeah it's all about the way you look after the car Okay guys, so the next time we catch up will be part three. And part three, um, the engine will be back in the car, we'll be getting it mapped, and um, we can see what performance differences all this work and all this effort get us. So really excited for that to happen. And we'll catch you in part three uh, to see the results.